Well, welcome to episode 21 of Staff Chat. Wow, y'all, I cannot believe we have filmed 21 of these this year. This will be our last for 2020. And how fitting for us to go into 21, 2021 with 21 episodes. That'll be fun. Um, Merry Christmas, everyone. If you are watching this, it is Christmas week and we um, wish you a very Merry Christmas. So today's topic is going to be really fun, I think. Uh, this came from John Kimbrough. It was his idea that we would share, if you had the ability to be in the Christmas story as told in Luke, and you could be an animate or inanimate object, what would you want to be? Um, how would you want to experience the Christmas story? And so I think it's going to be really fun to, to share and to see what people would say. So we need a volunteer to go first. I'll, I'll go first because it just popped into my head. All right, so uh, I think I would want to be like the Christmas star, way up in the in the sky, and just be able to see everything come together on that day. Um, but the, I just like to see how the, the pieces of the puzzle fit together, and I think it'd be awesome just to be way up in the sky and, and kind of help guide people as well. So that's what I would like to be. I think I'd want to be one of the sheep. I just want to be curled up next to the manger, just feeling the warmth of it all. Jane, you took mine. Uh, well, I was, so I was going to say sheep because um, the very first church that I worked at back when I was in Greenville would have a live nativity every year. And I would go and hug the sheep every single year um, because they were so fluffy and warm. And it just, it, that, that started Christmas for me is feeling all that warmth. Um, and the uh, one of the choir ladies would even wash my robe afterwards, so that was pretty great. Um, but I guess I'll say that um, another of my favorite characters is actually Melchior, uh, one of the wise men, who technically wasn't there on the day, on the night of Jesus' birth, but did get to see the Christ child. I love the idea of someone coming from so far away um, to see the Christ child. That, that must have taken a, a lot of dedication. That must have been a a really hard journey, so that's pretty impressive. Stephen, I'm not sure I know that member of the Avengers, but uh, it's know. from a mall in the night visitors, John. Come on. All right, I'll go next. Uh, yeah, I did suggest this one, and the reason I suggested it is because uh, I often, when I read through uh, the the story in Luke, uh, consider what what it would be like to be Joseph, because man that man must have been in a glass case of emotion. Like, oh my gosh, you know, I mean, he, like his wife just gave birth to this child that like technically isn't his, but it's also the savior of the universe. Like, that's a lot of emotional processing. So that's, that's who I would be, just because I would want to experience what that would be like for him. I almost said a Campbell, because when we're filming this, it happens to be hump day. Anyway, I'm done. I would want to be one of the shepherds. I kind of like being outside in the winter and uh, enjoying the stars at night and whatnot. Um, uh, outdoors is a wonderful experience. And for me, I, I enjoy walking around in the woods out behind our house, even when it's kind of uh, wet and the uh, sometimes sink almost up to my knees in the mud and whatnot, get kind of dirty. And think, you know, it must have been that way for those shepherds. And the fact that they're out there trying to catch a little sleep and all of a sudden things got kind of crazy for them. I don't know how far out in the field they were when they had to make their way in, but they did. And uh, then they get there and see this incredible experience, this light. And they don't fully understand what's going on either. Some of them were probably afraid and some of them were excited. And sometimes Christmas kind of generates that for me, a little bit of anxiety, uh, a lot of stuff going on but at the same time, an incredible peace. I think I'd like to be one of those guys, kind of smelly, kind of dirty, and uh, received by the Christ child there at the manger. Uh, I'll, I'll just add an echo to that. I, I would want to be one of the shepherds too, even though they were responsible for the sheep that were used in sacrifices in the temple uh, because of their profession, because they dealt with dead animals and, and uh, sheep poop and that kind of stuff. Uh, they would not have been allowed in the temple. So um, the fact that they got a front row seat uh, to see the birth of, of the Savior, uh, they were included in that story. Um, 
I'd, I'd like to have been a part of that. I believe I would like to have been one of the angels. I don't know if all angels are girls. I don't know. I guess they're boy angels too. But I, I just, you know, the angels have been in the presence of God. They came down and saw God's plan for the world in at the very beginning. And, and I think they really understood more than we ever will what it took for God to send his son Jesus, knowing what would happen 33 years later and knowing the whole shebang. So uh, I think the angels were looking at it from a whole different perspective than, than we ever could. And so I think that'd be neat. If my translation of the Bible says Gabriel came to Jesus, it wasn't Gabriella. So I think it's probably a male angel that came and spoke. I mean, came to Joseph. So I think it's probably Gabriel. That's what we do the preaching around this place. If you read Luke, uh, there are no animals actually mentioned in the Christmas story. So any any idea of animals being present is obviously an extension of our imagination. They could probably be there, and that's fine. So I like to think of myself as Dominic the donkey because for a couple of reasons, uh, one of which um, I'm, I'm sure he was there. And if you heard the song, uh, he's very helpful donkey it brings a lot of joy and uh i get a good kick out of the <laughs> good kick out of the the song every time i <laughs> every time i hear it it is quite funny and, and i feel like in the presence of jesus there would be a, a a a funny hilarious little donkey that everyone gets a a good laugh out of but uh anyway that's my character <laughs> to be present during the story even though he's not actually mentioned in the christmas story yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm also one of those characters that, that gets uh, little uh, excitement in regards to being in the Christmas story, but I, I've always thought that, that I would be the innkeeper. Um, I'm the person that said no, um, and uh, that uh, usually ends up where I, I, I find myself a lot in the no, but the innkeeper had to just be mesmerized like everybody else at the miracle that took place in that stable. And, uh, you know, I guess he could have said no to the stable, too. Uh, but it was great that the innkeeper did at least offer all that he had. Uh, and, uh, you know, who knows uh, what, what miracle they were able to witness and ha how that impacted his life from, from that day forward. John, I love that because I would also be the innkeeper, but probably culturally I would have had to be the innkeeper's wife. But I would do it not because he was the one that said no, but because I think we could do have done so much better than the stable and the manger. Like move somebody else out, send someone else who's not having a baby out to the barn. Let anyway. So I would want to do it so that I could have sort of changed the story there. Hey, I always think I would like to be one of the heavenly hosts. Also, I'll be up there with Don. Um, I think that I would love to sing praise over Jesus, and I can't sing, but I would, would have been able to if I was an angel. So I think I would love that most of all. And I'd be able to see the whole thing and not be in the forefront, but be there watching it all. I think that would be wonderful. I love that. Um, I think I would like to have been the manger. You know, as a mom, and even a dad, but I haven't experienced that. But as a mom holding a child in your arms is like the most wonderful, oh my gosh, wonderful feeling. And I think to have been the cradle, the manger that held Jesus, um, I can't imagine anything better than that. That would have been great. So, so I have asked Becca, her family has a tradition that she shared in our last staff chat, and I'm gonna let her share a little bit of that. Um, here in just a second so you'll have some context but i have asked becca if she would recite uh the christmas story as in luke 2 with us as we close out our time together becca. i will do my best but um when my mom learned it she learned it in the kjv so we always say it in the king james so um and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from caesar augustus that all the world should be taxed and this taxing was first made when cyrenius was governor of syria and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph went up from Galilee, out of Nazareth, into Judea, into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds living 
out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go into Bethlehem to see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told to them concerning the child. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Amen. Thank you, Becca. That is wonderful. Uh, may we all ponder these things in our heart this Christmas season. Um, Merry Christmas, friends. I miss seeing you guys in person and having our traditional Christmas breakfast and uh, all the laughter that we get to have around the table, but this has been good to share together. So everybody unmute and say Merry Christmas and wave goodbye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. You are loved. <laughs>